Now let's uh, discuss about one more uh, concept uh, that is AC applied to a capacitor. So here we need to see the phase relation between uh, current and voltage when a capacitor is uh, connected to a AC circuit. So we already know about this capacitor. We already studied about uh, that capacitor. We all already know uh, about the charges stored in the capacitor. Everything we have studied in our uh, previous classes. So let's uh, revise some basic knowledge about the capacitor. So capacitor means it is a uh, storing device. Using that uh, device, we can store the electrical energy. And uh, uh, the capacitor consists of uh, two plates. They are uh, separated by some distance. And actually, a uh, dielectric medium is introduced between two plates of the capacitor. So, we should have some knowledge that how a capacitor behaves if it is uh, connected to an AC circuit as well as if it is uh, connected to the DC circuit. It shows uh, a different kind of a behavior when they are connected in AC or a DC circuits. So whenever we were studying about concept of capacitor, we studied it uh, under the DC voltage. We have applied the DC and uh, we saw the characteristics of uh, that uh, capacitor. So these are all the things we have studied. But we are not seeing what is the, how does a, a capacitor behave if it is connected in a AC circuit. Yes. So let me give a brief uh, idea about uh, this capacitor in AC and DC circuit. So, let me uh, take a simple diagram to explain the uh, working of capacitor in AC and DC. Let's take a DC case. In DC, let's imagine we have a connected capacitor. So, if you have a connected uh, DC source for a capacitor, we know that DC means it is a direct current as a it gives a circuit, the current free flow from positive to negative. It is a conventional current. So as there is a current free flow through this, some charges will accumulate on one plate of the capacitor so that uh, there will be a, a force which is called as electrostatic force. Because of the electrostatic force, another kind of charge will accumulate on another surface of that capacitor. So, uh, it, it is, uh, which means that whenever the current flowing from the source of the capacitor, it, uh, we can say that the capacitor is charging. Because I told you that charges are accumulating on the plates of that, uh, that capacitor, which leads to a potential difference between these two capacitor, uh, plates of capacitor. So, whenever you connect to the capacitor at this source, that will charge. Once the charge is stored in the capacitors are completely filled, or uh, we can say if charge is stored in the capacitor is uh, reached to a saturation level, if it is reached to a maximum level, then it opposes the current flow in the circuit. So you should uh, know that when a capacitor is connected to DC circuit. It will goes on charge once the charge is stored in the capacitor. We use reach to the saturation level, which means that it, uh, the charge is stored in the plates of the capacitor reach to the maximum level. Then the capacitor doesn't allow the flow of charges in the circuit because it is completely charged. Okay, so this is what happens when a capacitor is uh, connected in a DC circuit. That is why what we can say is. Uh, once the capacitor is charged here, the capacitor is uh, uh, not allowing the flow of electron in a circuit. So uh, uh, it is uh, uh, it is uh, uh, not allowing the flow of electrons. So that that is a function of capacitor in a DC circuit. So that, in other words, what we can say is, 
the capacitor will block the DC through itself. It doesn't allow the flow of DC through it, direct current. It doesn't allow direct current through it. That is why it block the DC. But when you connect that capacitor in an AC circuit, it doesn't do like that. What, uh, what, uh, whatever the behavior it has shown when it is uh, connected DC source, that will not be there when the same capacitor is connected to the AC source. Because AC, we already know it, it is an alternating one. For a particular period of time, current will flow in one direction. And uh, at that point of instead of uh, at that time, instead of time, the direction of current changes. So, uh, so what happens is the capacitor for a short interval of time it's, uh, it uh, gets charged and once the direction of current reversed then the, whatever the charge stored in the capacitor will be discharged because the direction of current changed there. Okay. So this is the functioning of a capacitor when it is connected to a DC circuit. If the current flows in, in, in this direction then the charges will be stored here. After a short period of time direction current changes so it was flowing in, in this direction uh, at the particular instead of time it will flow like this see so direction of current flow changes that is why charges flow of charges and accumulation of charges also reverses so because of that when a current flow in one direction capacitor gets charged when the direction of current reversed it will discharge that is why uh, capacitor allow the current uh, allow the AC currents. It will uh, behave, uh, it will uh, conduct the current when it is connected to the AC circuit. So this is the behavior of this capacitor in the AC and the DC. Now what we have to say is, what will be the uh, relation between current and voltage? Mainly we have to focus on the phase relation between current and voltage in the case of a Capacitor. Let's see it. Let's take a diagram which uh, consisting a uh, AC source and a capacitor. We should draw the two parallel lines. Otherwise, it could be something else. It could be something uh, any other component because a representation of DC source and uh, and the capacitor are similar, there is a minute difference between them. That's why. So this is a capacitor of capacitance. See, there should have some capacitance. It is a capacity of a capacitor to, to store the charge. So that is known as a C capacitor. And uh, V is a potential that is supplied by this source V is equal to, it is an instantaneous one, V is equal to Vm sin of it. And whatever the instantaneous voltage supplied by this, it, uh, it will also appear across this capacitor. Because they are, it looks like they are parallelly connected. So that's it. So now let's write the potential of EMF due to the instantaneous value of uh, EMF or a potential due to the source. And after that, we should uh, uh, prove an equation uh, for the current and we should see the relation between that uh, work equation of voltage and the current. Now let's write potential across. AC source is, we know the, uh, inst I should write instantaneous I'm writing instantaneous EMF across AC source. So already uh, we know a standard equation, V is equal 
equal to Vm sin omega. Yes. Now we can apply KVL to this loop. Okay. So according to KVL, the algebraic sum of the potential around the closed loop is equal to C. Why we are taking is we need to find out the value of current. That's it. So let's uh, write. Uh, yeah, we can also apply the KVM. Applying KVM to the loop. So voltage across this voltage which is supplied by this source must be equal to the voltage across the capacitor. V is equal to Vc. Okay? Because they are since they are connected parallelly, since uh, uh, they are since they are connected parallelly, the potential developed across this must be equal to the potential across this capacitor. So V is equal to Vc. Vc means it is the potential across a capacitor and we already know the equation for potential across a capacitor that is C is, we know the formula C is equal to Q by V. So V is equal to, you can write uh, Q by C. So that is why we can write Q by C. Then we know the value of V, V is an instantaneous value for potential that is supplied by the AC source that is V is equal to Vm sin omega t. Let's find V is equal to Vm sin omega t is equal to Q by C. Now let's realize this in terms of Q. Q is equal to Vm into C sin omega t. Now, so we know the value of charge now. It is a charge stored in this capacitor. Q is equal to Vm C into sin omega with the help of, with knowing the value of Q, can we find the current through it? Definitely. Because we know the equation for current. Current means it is the rate of flow of charge. So using that equation, we can find the value of current. Current in the loop is I is equal to we have, to, we have to differentiate this. I is equal to dq by dt. It is the rate of flow of charge per time. So I equal to d by dt of q is equal to Vm into C sine omega t. Now we have to differentiate this. Let's differentiate uh, here Vm and uh, Vm C sine omega t. Vm and C are constant here. Vm is a, uh, is a peak value of uh, voltage, C is a capacitance, which is a variable now. Omega T is a variable. Let's take it outside. So I is equal to Vm into C d by dt of sin omega t. So differentiation of sin, differentiation of sin gives uh, cos and uh, after that, after differentiating the sign, we should differentiate omega in so that we will left with the omega. So what we can write is I is equal to Vm into C, Vm into C, then uh, differentiation of sign is cos, cos omega t, then we should differentiate the omega t because it is a Omega is a, and we are, the term is dependent on time and we are differentiating with respect to time. That is why it should again differentiate omega t. If you differentiate omega t, d, d, by, d by dt of omega t, omega is a constant, dt dt cancels. So we will have to do omega. So omega into c into cos omega t. So if we look at this equation, we can write this as Vm equal to 1 divided by omega c. See here, I have just rearranged this equation. Here I have omega c, but here I have 1 by omega c. So you just reverse this, you just inverse this. If you invert it, you should get this. And, uh, and uh, we are getting here. 
If you take the inverse of this, take the inverse of this, 1 by omega c, which will be multiplied with this omega c divided by 1. So, these are 1 and c. So, here cos omega t. So, I, I need to change, I need, I, I need uh, some reformation there because voltage t is in the form of sign. That is why I should change this. I should change the cos. So, I can write cos omega t can be written as sin omega t plus phi omega t. This is we can write. Cos omega t is also equal to sin omega t plus phi omega t. I will uh, rearrange it now. So, I is equal to, I can write Vm by, instead of writing 1 by omega z, I am writing this as xc into sin of omega t plus phi omega t. Yes. And x is similar kind of a term you have seen while we are the uh, inductor AC is applied to inductor. So uh, here x means it is called as a capacitive reactance. Remember, I'm repeating. It is called capacitive reactance. So capacitive reactance means what then? So it is nothing but a resistance. So it is nothing but a resistance and it is called capacitive reactance. So how to define it then? Capacitive reactance means it is a resistance offered by the capacitor to the current flow to itself is known as a capacitive reactance. So we understood that capacitive reactance is nothing but a resistance. So that's why uh, that is why the resistance sorry the unit of this quantity should also be ohm because we know the unit for resistance it is ohm so similar unit should be there for the capacitive reactance so this is if you look at this this looks like a ohm's law because we know that v is equal to i into r this is in the form v by r so v by r can be written as an i but here i am writing this as i m yeah into sin omega t plus phi omega t. This is the equation for current when capacitor is connected to AC circuit. Where some of the results we have got here. Where what I replaced, what I replaced Vm by Xc as Im. So Im is equal to Vm by Xc is the see I told you whenever I tell M comes there, then it is a maximum value of current or it is a peak value of current or it is in current amplitude. So that's why when I am coming up at C is in current amplitude. Current amplitude. And it is a okay, fine. And also one more result, uh, one more subscription we, uh, we made that is 1 by omega C as X C. Xc is equal to 1 by omega c is the capacity reactance. You see? Capacity reactance. So, this is the substitution we have made. So, finally, we have the equations for current through that loop as well as. We know the equation for the instantaneous values of uh, potential. This is also instant value of current to that. So I and V are known now. And let's compare. So let's take this is the equation for one. This is the equation for one. Let's compare it. In the place of V, we have I in the place of V and we have, here we have I am. Here we have sine of omega t, but here we have sine of omega t plus pi by two. There is a difference in the angles. See here. If the angle occupied by this voltage curve is omega t, then the angle occupied by the current at the same time would be omega t plus phi by 2. So the angle occupied by this current curve is more than the angle occupied by this voltage curve. So from this what we can understand is the current is moving forward than the voltage. So it is leading, current is leading, moving forward than the 
voltage. That's why what we can say is when a capacitor is connected to a AC circuit, current leaves the voltage by how much amps? By pi volt. So this is a relation uh, between uh, current and the voltage when capacitor is connected in a AC circuit. So to uh, get a clear picture of this, to, show, to see the relation between current and voltage, we should draw uh, a diagram called a phasor diagram. Uh, it is a, a graphical representation showing the relation between a current and a voltage when capacitor is connected to a AC circuit. Let's see. Let's see the phasor diagram, phasor relation. Yeah. One sentence I should add here from one to from one to Can be concluded. It can be concluded that there is a phase difference. Phase difference between current and How much phase difference? It is 5 volt. 90 degree phase difference will be there. Now let's see the phase diagram. Let's uh, draw the wave. I, V, R, I will take along this. You can take omega along this x axis. Now this is a curve for V, V is here, uh, V is uh, lagging but uh, current is uh, leading, current is the leading one. This is the this represents the uh, curve of I, variation of I. You can see here. So this is a graph for voltage. See here, this is the angle pi by two. So this is the peak value of uh, current. This is the peak value of uh, Sorry, this is the peak value of voltage, this is the peak value of current. See here, yeah, the curve voltage has uh, covered an angle of pi by 2 here. Once it is uh, reached here, then the angle covered by it, that phasor, is a pi by 2. At the same time, angle covered by the another curve, that is I, is 180 degrees. See, remaining part will be here. So we started from here 0 to 90 degree, it covered a 180 degree when the voltage covered only pi by 2. So what is the angle then? Difference in the angles that is pi by 2. 
So this is in uh, uh, phase the relation between the current and voltage when the capacitor connected to the AC circuit. Now let's draw this. Now to draw the phase relation, we should take the two points at the same time or at the same angle. Let me take the two points over here. So this is the this is a angle from 90 to 180. So you should fall, phases should fall in the second quadrant. I hope you know this. So we have taken the two points over here. This is a phase, current phase. See, this is the current phase, I up to line, and this is the voltage phase. This is a capital V and angle formed by this V with respect to the axis that is omega T and angle between current and voltage that is here it is uh, pi by 2 this pi by 2 so the net angle total angle is pi by 2 plus omega T that is what you saw in the equation I is equal to I am equal to sin omega t plus pi by two. So the angle, total angle of my I is omega t plus pi by two, whole angle. So these are the representations. And uh, magnitude of this I is equal to I am sin omega t plus pi by two. V is equal to V m sin omega t. That is the uh, sorry, the magnitude of that V. V is equal to Vm sin omega t, I equal to Im sin omega t plus pi by So this is the phase relation between current and voltage. So when the voltage reaches to maximum value, the current is reaching to the minimum value. Okay, that is why there is a phase difference between current and voltage by an angle pi by two. So, this is about phase relation between current and voltage. Then, what is the next thing we have to see in this? While uh, discussing the concepts of uh, inductor and resistor connected cases, we saw the power effect of power. In a similar way, we should see what is the effect of power. Is there any power dissipation? Is there any instantaneous power dissipation when uh, Capacitor connected to a circuit. Is there any average power dissipation over one complete cycle? Or when uh, uh, when uh, the wave completes a one complete cycle, the angle covered by it would be 360 degree. So complete wave means this can be called as one complete wave. Let's see the power uh, uh, in a capacitor. So I was uh, in the previous years also I was uh, trying to explain the power with the help of uh, this uh, diagram, this relation. So we can uh, let's let's uh, do the same in this case also. See here. So this is the value of uh, current curve of current, or can be calculated as power equal to voltage into current. See, this is a current, it is a positive one, but it is a decreasing one, still it is positive. So, this is a positive one, voltage is positive because it is increasing. That is why here, T here, power is positive. Now, here, uh, when it is reaches here, when this is a reach here, V is positive, but current is here, it is negative. It is in the negative axis. That is why here it will be. P is negative. Then, after this, here current is current is decreasing one, and it is negative. And uh, here voltage is also decreasing, but it is uh, negative. 
So current and voltage both are negative. So if both are negative, minus to minus, it becomes plus. So that is why here it is plus. Power is plus, plus value. So at this point, at this point, voltage is negative, it is a decreasing one, but it is a negative value. Here current is positive one, so plus and minus is there, plus into minus, minus, so all will be negative. See here. So if you take a one complete cycle, over a complete cycle, what will happen to the power? That we should observe. So here for a uh, angle of pi by 2, for a uh, 1 by 4 cycle, power is positive. Next power is negative, means energy is absorbed in here, energy is released here. Power is an increasing one, means energy is the releasing one. Power absorbed, energy absorbed, energy released. Energy absorbed, energy released. Then what is the power loss over a complete cycle? It will be Z. So this is the qualitative approach. Then we should uh, give a quantitative approach. Mathematically, we have to Let's see. Power in pure capacity to serve. Now let us directly get into the derivation. Instantaneous, okay, let's write power supply. We cannot write power loss because power loss over a complete cycle is zero. That is why we should write power supply. Power supply to capacity user. How to find? P is equal to voltage into current. We know the equations for voltage and current. Small i should right? V equal to Vm sin of T and I equal to that is Im sin omega T plus pi by 2 or cos omega T. Or you can write cos omega T. So this is equal to, P is equal to, let's write Vm and Im together, Vm, Im, sin omega t into cos omega t. So this is equal to sin omega t into cos omega t is equal to sin 2 omega t divided by 2. Sin 2 omega t is equal to 2 sin, sin 2 theta is equal to 2 sin theta cos theta. 2 is not there yet, that's why we should uh, take back to the LH. That's why I have written here. VMIM uh, by 2 means which means that sin omega by 2 is equal to sin omega t into cos omega t. Now this is a value of instantaneous power supply to the capacitance. Then average average power over complete cycle is average power over a complete cycle is let's see that if you wanted to average power we should put a bar over here we should write that this is the way of taking the average average of uh, we should write Vm im by 2 into sine 2 omega here Vm Im divided by 2 is a constant. Here it is sin 2 omega. See here, yeah, angle is already over a complete cycle, angle will be 360. 2 omega t equal to 360 degrees. Sin 360 it is equal to 0. So that is why P bar equal to 0 over a complete cycle. So this is about this is a uh, equation for power in the pure capacity circuit.